Life is but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Interesting cue. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Perhaps maybe a little uh, Hamlet? Oh, no, I know Hamlet. And what he might say with irony, I say with conviction. What a piece of work is man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form, in moving, how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god. Surely you don't see your species like that, do you? I see us one day becoming that cute. Is it that which concerns you? You know, Commander, I think I figured out why humans don't like Ferengi. Not no, of course. The way I see it, humans used to be a lot like Ferengi. Greedy, acquisitive, interested only in profit. We're a constant reminder of a part of your past you'd like to forget. But we don't have time for this. But you're overlooking something. Humans used to be a lot worse than the Ferengi. Slavery. Concentration camps. Interstellar wars. You see, we're nothing like you. We're better. Then why do you still try to emulate humans? What purpose does it serve except to remind you that you are incomplete? It is the struggle itself that is most important. We must strive to be more than we are, Law. It does not matter that we will never reach our ultimate goal. The effort yields its own rewards. Seize the time, Manipur. Live now. Make now always the most precious time. Now will never come again. I love you, Father. How little do you mortals understand time? Must you be so linear, jean luc You judge yourselves against the pitiful adversaries you've encountered so far. The Romulans, the Klingons. They're nothing compared to what's waiting. You are about to move into areas of the galaxy containing wonders more incredible than you can possibly imagine. And terrors to freeze your soul. You're not prepared for what awaits you. How can we be prepared for that which we do not know? But I do know that we're resolute, we're determined, and your help is not required. Really? Oh, the arrogance. I think when one has been angry for a very long time, one gets used to it. What is that supposed to mean? Six years ago, they assimilated me into their collective. I had their cybernetic devices implanted throughout my body. I was one of them. And it becomes comfortable, like, like old leather. The Borg hurt you, and now you're going to hurt them back. This is not about revenge. Liar! This is about saving the future of humanity! John, look, blow up the damn ship! No! And finally... No! I'm so familiar that one can't ever remember feeling any other way. I can't live out my days as that person. Au contraire. He's the person you wanted to be. One who was less arrogant and undisciplined in his youth. The Jean-Luc Picard you wanted to be had quite a different career from the one you remember. That Picard never had a brush with death. Never came face to face with his own mortality. Never realized how fragile life is or how important each moment must be. So his life never came into focus. He drifted much of his career never seizing the opportunities that presented themselves. He learned to play it safe. And he never, ever got noticed by anyone. You're right, Q. I would rather die as the man I was than live the life I just saw. In this galaxy, 
is a mathematical probability of three million Earth-type planets. And in all of the universe, three million million galaxies like this. And in all of that, and perhaps more, only one of each of us Don't destroy the one named Kirk. This isn't the end. You say that with remarkable assuredness. With experience. When the Borg destroyed my world, my people were scattered throughout the universe. We survived. As will humanity survive. As long as there's a handful of you to keep the spirit alive, you will prevail even if it takes a millennium. Galileo, did you know that he was tried by the Inquisition for teaching that the Earth moved around the sun? But the same thing's happening now with all this stuff about the, the celestial temple and the wormhole. It's done. No, it's not. You've got to realize something, Jake. For over 50 years, the one thing that allowed the Bajorans to survive the Cardassian occupation was their faith. The prophets were their only source of hope and courage. But there were no prophets. They were just aliens that you found in the wormhole. Why shouldn't they be considered prophets? Are you serious? It may not be what you believe, but that doesn't make it wrong. If you start to think that way, we'd lose everything we've worked for here. I am female. I was born that way. I have had those feelings all of my life. I am not sick because I feel this way. I do not need to be cured. What we do is no different from what you do. We talk and laugh. We complain about work. We talk about our families. And we worry about the future. Captain, you're not going to give up, are you? There are three things to remember about being a starship captain. Keep your shirt tucked in. Go down with the ship. And never abandon a member of your crew. Over the past two years, I have become familiar with the individuals on this vessel. Your survival is important to me. I am willing to risk my own well-being if it increases our chances of success. Voyager is my collective now. And perhaps that's the reason that we fascinate you so. Because our puny behavior shows you a glimmer of the one thing that evades your omnipotence a moral center. And if so, I can think of no crueler irony than that you should destroy us, whose only crime is being too human. Jean-Luc, sometimes I think the only reason I come here is to listen to these wonderful speeches of yours. If change is inevitable, predictable, beneficial, doesn't logic demand that you be a part of it? I would never tell you or anyone else to give up hope. There is a way out of every box, a solution to every puzzle. It's just a matter of finding it. And the only way to face it is to stand your ground.